Hello, this is the screencast for section 3.11 through 3.13, and I hope you're doing well and staying healthy. 3.11 is on spectroscopy and the electromagnetic spectrum. The learning objective is explain the relationship between a region of the EM spectrum and the types of molecular or electronic transitions associated with that region. For the essential knowledge, um, most of the time questions uh, referring to this uh, section deal with the atomic emission spectrum and that's this concept over here. Um, it, it's dealing with uh, electrons are in energy levels. The ground state is where the electron normally is. It's the lowest energy electron configuration. But if an electron will, will gain energy, it can move up to a higher energy level. That's, that's referred to as the excited state. Well, when an electron, it doesn't stay in that excited state. So when it falls back down to its ground state, it gives off photons. So that's visible light. So electrons moving from the excited state to the ground state will give off um, energy in, in the form of visible light. Um, a couple of the things with this section that um, are, are less common. Infrared radiation deals with changes in molecular vibration and microwave radiation deals with changes in molecular rotation. But really, I've never seen questions on these bottom two concepts. It's always been about atomic emission spectrum and electrons moving from one energy level to another and giving off visible light in the process. Section 3.12 is on the photoelectric effect. The learning objective is explain the properties of an absorbed or emitted photon in relationship to an electronic transition in an atom or molecule. The photoelectric effect is when you have uh, waves, light rays that are incident upon some substance, if they have the right amount of energy, it can cause electrons to be emitted. Um, you don't really need to know that. What this all leads to is these two equations right here. This is what you need to know and you have to be able to work with these two equations. These are on your equation sheet. This top one, um, C, represents the speed of light and that's a constant value that's given on your equation sheet. This symbol right here represents the wavelength in meters and this symbol, the V, represents uh, frequency measured in uh, hertz or waves per second. This equation right here, E represents energy measured in joules. H is Planck's constant and that's a constant value also given on your green sheet, your equation sheet. And this is also frequency. These are both frequency right here. So basically what it boils down to is you want to be able to solve any one of either of these equations for any one of those variables. Next we have 3.13, that's Beer-Lambert Law. The learning objective is explain the amount of light absorbed by a solution of molecules or ions in relationship to the concentration, path length, and molar absorptivity. The essential knowledge is uh, it's working with this equation right here. This is the Beer-Lambert Law right there. Um, A represents absorbance. This, uh, it looks like an E, but it's epsilon. That represents molar absorptivity. B represents path length, and C is concentration. So we did a simulation for this lab um, a while ago, and this lab uses a spectrophotometer. So what that does is, is you, you take a, um, a solution, and with, with this lab you want to use a solution that has a color to it. And you put that in this container, and this container is called a cuvette. And you have incident light, so you, you shine light on it of a particular color, and then you measure how much of that light gets transmitted. So you have some detector on this side that will that will measure the the how much how much light gets transmitted. The absorbance is the ratio of incident light to transmitted light. 
So as the concentration, this is what the data looks like. Generally, as you increase the concentration, the absorbance goes up in a linear fashion like this. And usually what you're trying to do in this lab is to figure out um, epsilon right there, what the molar absorptivity. And if you compare this to the, the line equation, y equals mx plus b, well, we have absorbance on the y-axis. You have concentration on the x-axis. So the slope is going to be equal to epsilon times the path length. Uh, it's terrible writing, but that's, that's what the molar absorptivity is. And then if you know what the path length is, you can figure out what the molar absorptivity is. So generally what you're trying to do in this lab uh, change the concentration of the solution that's in this cuvette, do that several times, measure the absorbance uh, with the lab apparatus, that uh, spectrophotometer, plot that out, find the slope of this line, and then from the slope of the line you can figure out what the molar absorptivity is. And that's pretty much all there is for that lab. Um, that's all for today. Have a nice day. Bye.